So I've yet to see any YouTube video or Reddit post or any information online about if it's possible to convert Govi's brand new Curtain Lights Pro to WLED. I'm always up for a good challenge, so in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. Now for a little background, I actually started this about a month ago, and I think I quit about three different times. But through a massive amount of trial and error, I eventually figured it out, and it's more simple than you could ever imagine. Now right here I have the 24 volt 3 amp power supply that this kit comes with, and the Govi controller which is connected to the small white box at the beginning of the curtain lights. The first thing I'm going to do is unplug the power supply. Then I'll be going about 6 inches past the Govi controller and cutting that off and tossing it aside. Next I'll strip back the outer sheath of the cable running to the lights, and then I'll strip back the red voltage and the white data line. Now for products that are larger in scale like these curtain lights, I think it's good to have shots like this that provide orientation, but I also think people appreciate close up footage with good lighting, so I'll again go over the same steps here one more time. So right here they're using white for data, red is their voltage, and I've seen this on a few other products where there's just a bare copper wire for ground, which I'll quickly use some heat shrink tubing to cover up so it's not as exposed. First I used a very small piece for the individual wire, and then a larger one at the base. And as always, I'll put links to everything I'm using in the description in case you want to replicate what I'm doing. Moving on to the controller, and I'll be using Glidopto's new Elite 4D that comes pre-installed with WLED. And on the right hand side, the red voltage wire will go into the red opening, the ground wire that we just put the heat shrink tubing on into the black GND slot, and finally our white data line into the IO16 opening. Now what's nice is that the Govi 24 volt 3 amp unit that these curtain lights come with does have a barrel plug so we can go ahead and insert that into the left side of the controller for power without needing to make any cuts. And if you did want to install these outside with the modifications we just did, it's as simple as picking up a small weatherproof box like this, shoving the controller and the exposed wires inside, closing it up and you're ready to go. Now going back to the lights on the floor, as I get this plugged in, it's important to highlight that these curtain lights actually require 5 volts. But what this little white box is doing is taking our 24 volt 3 amp power and converting it down to 5 volts which is getting fed into the beginning of the lights. And then how they have this set up is that this white wire is sending more power to the end of the curtains. And I'm assuming this line is again 24 volts, but once it hits the white box, it gets stepped down to 5 volts before touching the lights. So once everything's plugged in, open up the WLED app, go into Config, LED Preferences, and I have the limiter turned on and set to 4000 milliamps. Strip type is WS281X, color order RGB, LED set to 960, and GPIO is 16. Go ahead and hit save, in Houston we have a problem. And as you can see, there's this horrible flickering that never went away, and I tried to change about every possible setting within the WLED program that you could, and no matter what I tried, it didn't fix the issue. The first thing I thought of was that there must be some type of interference coming from the white box at the beginning, and whatever it was sending down line must be causing the issue. So I cut the cord to sever the connection, tried it again, and sadly it was doing the exact same thing. Next I thought maybe if I got rid of that 24 to 5 volt converter at the beginning and just try hooking everything up to a 5 volt supply instead that it might work. And as a quick FYI, the one wire with the little black dots on it is the voltage, the middle is the ground, and the outside unmarked wires are data. I hooked those directly up to the Glidopto controller, used a 5 volt 10 amp supply, and it still didn't fix the issue. I tried using a signal amplifier to see if boosting the data made a difference, I tried using a booster that I had laying around from the Govi permanent outdoor lights, and I tried using every single different controller I had laying around the house, and nothing worked and I was ready to give up. So literally, the last idea that I had that didn't even make sense in my mind since I'd already cut the power injection wires at the beginning was to altogether remove that wire plus the white box at the end. So that's what I tried as my last possible idea. I then plugged things in expecting the same issues and lo and behold it was actually working. There was no flickering and everything was working as expected. Now before moving on, like many things in life, once you know the answer, the solution becomes even easier. For whatever reason, coming out of the box, and this is at the end of our lights, instead of just having the power injection, voltage, and ground line, they still have that third data line, which is the true culprit. So instead of doing everything I just did, all you technically have to do is sever that data line at the end like I'm doing now, I'll cap it off with a Wego so it won't touch, and that's it. Now to actually set up our matrix, go to config, 2D configuration, and change the 1D strip to 2D matrix. 
The number of panels is one. First LED is top left. Orientation set to vertical and the dimensions are 30 by 32. Hit save and just like that, you're all set up and can play around with all the matrix animations. So what's crazy is I currently don't have the power injection attached and I had zero issues running this without that component while keeping the brightness limiter at 4000 milliamps. But if you do keep that power injection component intact while severing the data line at the end like I showed you, I'd recommend bumping the limiter up to 6000 milliamps to see what type of performance you get. And the other thing is that WLED recommends a max of 800 pixels per data output and obviously I'm running 960 and I'll let you be the judge for yourself, but at least for me, the frame rate is perfectly acceptable. And since we now know what the issue was, you can absolutely remove the voltage converter and just use a 5 volt power supply if you want. So the Glidopto controller I'm using does have 4 data outputs, and with the information I covered in this video, it's super easy to combine multiple curtains to create a larger canvas. And if this is something you would like a deeper dive on, please let me know and I can try doing a follow up video, but I'm currently running these two curtains with just one 24 volt 3 amp supply and it's working perfectly with the brightness turned down. Now the main reason I put these lights in the aluminum channel is because how easy it is to move them around and mount them at different places. I'm using some heavy duty command strips and I'll get these hung on my wall next to the media center. And since we're now running WLED, I know a lot of people that'll be excited to get these hooked up to X lights or any of the other amazing programs out there that are compatible with WLED. So from here on out, I'm going to have some fun getting these set up to LED FX, which I am still planning on doing a full length video on, but I hope you enjoy the final results and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. Turn around.